So we've done a bit of work to uh, invent a new way to store negative value into a regular binary number. We've done that by allowing one of the bits to correspond to a negative place value to allow us to subtract out a number that we use to actually make a negative number positive. So the radix complement starts by saying, take a really big number and subtract off the number we want to represent as a negative number, and we're gonna make that correspond to our positive number. So 25 is now gonna be equal to negative seven, but to make that consistent, we have to subtract off that big number again, and we do that by actually placing it in the representation. This number is negative 32. This number is positive 25. And together, these two numbers correspond to negative 7. We want to make the number big enough that it will uh, not have to give us any problems when we subtract numbers from it. And we want to have this number be mostly zeros so that when we actually make the number that corresponds to our negative number, we can just slot it in beside it. But that means in order to do this subtraction, uh, we have a lot of borrowing to do. And the whole point of this was to try to construct a negative number without subtracting. And so let's see if there might be some shorthand for creating this 25, which is actually going to be our negative number in the first place. When we look at the um, truth table for the subtractor, uh, let me find it here. This is in the notes, the subtraction truth table we can look at um, all of the different possibilities and we can sort of uh, bring this down into the possibilities that are relevant for the work we're doing, which is when X is zero and Y is some value, right? Because most of the time X is gonna be zero, except at the very far end, you've got that one. So most of the time X is zero, uh, that's here. Uh, well, that's all of these here, right? Most of the time X is zero and most of the time then we're gonna have to borrow, right? We're always borrowing and x is zero. And if we look at the cases when that's true, we can see that actually the end result of the difference is always the opposite of uh, the input. So the x result of the difference is always gonna be the opposite of the input. So all we really have to do is just flip the bits and that's gonna give us that difference. Because if you notice when we do that, at the very bottom end, we actually end up with an extra one. Let me show you what I mean. If I take a big number and I subtract out a smaller number, uh, the whole point of this is to build a representation that can show us our negative numbers without actually having to subtract. So let's do the same thing we did before. Let's take 32, 32, uh, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And we're going to subtract some other number. Let's subtract uh, 15. 1, 1, 1, 1. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. That's the number 15. If we add those all together, we get that. And what we'll see is that for most of the cases, when we borrow, we'll put zeros here just to make it all work. Uh, when we borrow, one becomes a zero and that becomes two. And then this becomes a one here and a one there. And that becomes a one here and a one there. And that becomes a one here and a one there. That becomes a one here and a one there but we don't go farther than that, right? We don't borrow from here into a, the next column because there is no next column. So in this least um, significant bit, it's gonna be a bit different. For all of these, what you find is that the one minus one is zero, one minus one is zero, one minus one is zero, one minus zero is one, etc. And in this last one, we have two minus one becomes one. So this is actually one more than it would be if you flip the bits. Uh, so if all you're doing is just inverting from zeros into ones, or from ones, I guess, from this one, from ones into zeros, this last bit, you have to actually add an extra one because you have two as a result of borrowing in, but not borrowing out. And so there's an extra one floating around that you have to add to make that result happen. So what we can say then is instead of actually doing the subtraction, we can actually just invert the bits and add one. So now if we want to figure out what uh, the difference is, if we say uh, X minus Y when X equals some power of two, some big power of two, we can say that um, the result is going to be uh, Y bar one. And this is where the flip the bits and add one comes from that you might have heard uh, when you're using two's complement. 
is that we're doing all this borrowing, but we end up with a two here that we're not getting rid of by borrowing out to the next column. And so we have to end up adding one to it. So let's see if that works. Let's go back to our original example. If we had the number seven, one, 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 right? That equals seven. We wanna flip the bits, zero, 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 and add one, gives us zero, zero, one. That doesn't look quite right, does it? We thought we had to have this great big number uh, and all of this borrowing. Well, there's no borrowing involved. The reason is that we've actually made a mistake here. This setup now is not enough to represent a full positive number anymore. We have to give that number uh, the place value of that big negative number. Whether we're using it or not, we have to build it into the representation. Otherwise, we won't be able to tell the difference between negative numbers and positive numbers. So if we look back to our original notes and we say that the big number we're looking at is 32, if we don't have any value of 32, so this is wrong. So now we're gonna have seven like this, but we have to also say, so one, two, four, eight, 16, and 32. We have to also say that there is no big negative number because we're not having to subtract out the 32 that we added to the negative number to make it work. So now if we have a positive number like this, it's got to have zeros in the front of it to say that there isn't any negative number that we're subtracting out. Now, again, we'll try it again. We're going to flip the bits and we're going to add one, 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 zero, zero, one. This now should be negative seven. This was positive seven. And we flip the bits and add one, and this gives us negative seven. Well, let's verify. This is negative 32. Remember we said that that, that uh, big number that we were subtracting out because we had to add it to the negative number in the first place, that's going to be in our representation as the top bit of our representation. That's negative 32. Then we add 16 and 8 and 1. Well, let's do the math, right? 32 plus 16, negative 32 plus 16. Well, that's negative 16. Negative 16 plus 8. Well, that's negative 8. Plus 1 is negative 7. So that works. So this is really cool. Because remember, the whole point of this was to be able to do the subtraction without actually having to subtract. And we have now accomplished this. We can create a negative number without subtracting. All we have to do is flip the bits and add one. And when you flip the bits and add one, we get a representation that we confirm is accurate as a negative number. Not only that, we can use this same original representation of integers in the same, uh, the same system as these new representations of negative numbers. It's all the same thing. It all works. All we have to say is whether there's any negative value or not. If there isn't any negative place value, the number's positive. If there is, then we've got negative place value. We have to figure out what that value is gonna be. So this is the two's complement representation, is the top bit is gonna be negative. All the other bits are gonna be as they were before. They're gonna be positive. And we use that to represent the negative number by subtracting this big positive number from all the other values that are stored in here. This part here, corresponds to that value that we get when we take our big number and subtract off the value that we want to represent as a negative number. And then we put back the big number again by having it as a negative place value in our number. So this is two's complement, negative place value at the front, all the others are positive place value. And in the next video, I'll show you some of the um, advantages and some of the challenges with this new representation.